Razers here! Last Wednesday I visited Gamescon in Germany. Uh, I went on behalf of Press A to join.com, so big shout out to them. Link of the website will be in the video description, just as more articles there are for Gamescon on the website. Gamescon 2016 started for me with Sniper Elite 4. And Sniper Elite 4 is more of the same we've seen in their past games. But I would like to see that as a good thing and not as a bad thing. The Sniper Elite formula works really well and they just made a better looking game, bigger levels. And they added some things to breathe in new life into the franchise. So for example, uh, the, uh, from my experience now with the hands-on demo, the kill cam corresponds more with the point of entry where the bullets enter and they look better than before. Uh, in its entirety, the game is graphically amazing. Uh, the level is gigantic. The guy who was showing me around, they, he told me that the demo level wasn't... that it wasn't possible to complete the demo level in under an hour. So that's quite impressive. You, you could see it by all the objectives there were throughout the demo. You now, for example, have an animation when uh, the enemy calls in reinforcement. And also one of the very interesting new additions to the game is when you are discovered, and you sit around too long in the place you were hiding and sniping from, they can call in an air strike. So you can get mortared on your ass. The game looks very exciting. The game will be out on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC on the 14th of February from next year. Uh, after that, I had a presentation at Techland about the game Torment Tides of Numenera, if I am pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Torment Tides of Numenera is a, a fantasy science fiction action RPG, try not to fall over that description title, uh, with a massive immersive world where everything and everyone has a story. Uh, what they told us is that every NPC, every playable character, character and almost any object in the world is related to each other in a certain way. Everything in you interact with uh, will have uh, a consequence on how the story will unfold. Uh, the game also has something that most games do not offer anymore, and that's a game over. Uh, even in the first 10 minutes of the game, you can reach the game over screen, although you're not technically dead forever and have to start over, you will just start into a new game. So also your deaths will have a real impact on how the story plays out. Uh, I, what I didn't know is that Torment's Tides of Numera is the thematic follow-up to Planescape Torment, which in all fairness I haven't played, but uh, by the way, they explained this uh game it got me really interested and i will keep close eye on development and will try the game myself for sure this game will release on pc playstation and xbox in the first quarter of 2017 it's already available on early access on steam so if you are curious about this game go check it out yourself after that i went on to the ea business lounge uh, they are first started with Battlefield 1. We were giving a short presentation about Battlefield 1 and the game mode we were about to play. The game mode we are going to play is Rush, so nothing new there. It's one of the most solid core game modes in the Battlefield series that they should never take out. It also introduces to a train. Um, the train is a, a behemoth vehicle and apparently there's more behemoth vehicles in the game, but the train apparently is what they told us. is the biggest player controllable vehicle ever to have appeared in one of the Battlefield games. The train, to be honest, looked massive with cannons, mortar fire, and machine guns. So it's something to get excited for hopping in and destroying everything in your path. Um, also, destruction is back. The thing that was most missing in Battlefield 3, 4, and Hardline was the destruction on the massive scale they showed us in Bad Company 1 and Ben Company 2. I really missed it in those games and I'm really happy that they brought it back to this game. Uh, so we played Rush on Sinai Desert and it was uh, very exciting, a lot of things happening around you, sandstorms and, and battle everywhere. Unfortunately, our enemy team who was attacking us, they sucked and they only could destroy one objective. So the game was over too quick, which everybody stood around wondering, is it already over? Can we play another game? But we were just escorted out. <coughs> If you want to check out Battlefield 1 for yourself, you can play in the open beta starting from the 31st of August and the game's release date is 21st of October this year and will be available on PC, PlayStation and Xbox as well. After that, in the EA Business Lounge as well, we got a small presentation about the Titanfall 2 single player. Uh, the first thing that really caught my attention is when the protagonist started talking, I recognized his voice. 
um, after the presentation, I went up to the guy giving the presentation and asked him, uh, I heard this voice before, can you tell me uh, uh, who's the one doing the voiceover and tell me in what other games he, he, he stars in. Uh, he was able to tell me that the voice is done by Matthew Mercer, but he wasn't able to tell me from what other games I might have known him. He, he told me that I, uh, that's quite sure that I know him from other games, but he didn't remember in what other games he starred. Uh, so I um, checked it out and I did it myself, and apparently he is the voice for Leon S. Kennedy, among many others uh, from the Resident Evil series. Um, but, but that's not the most important thing. The single player looks quite promising. Uh, they didn't just implement all the uh, multiplayer aspects and made a linear story. They actually uh, started from scrap. They tried uh, to implement just the multiplayer things and made a story, but it didn't work out. So they actually started all over and they implemented things like optional conversations. Um, there's a, an enticing story to it. Uh, the story starts out, you are a grunt in uh, the military and one of your friends who is a pilot and he operates of course as a pilot, the Titan, and he trains you in secret. You go on a mission, uh, you get into a space battle, your ship crashes, your friend the pilot dies and you will be given control of the Titan and that's where the story builds on. Uh, um, I don't think we're going to get a very, very serious story because uh, we were shown one of the big enemies from the game and he had a really over-the-top German accent, which was really funny seeing the reaction of the Germans in the audience react to it. They also thought it was funny, so they didn't take any offense. But the single player looks really promising and is, uh, from, from, is something really to keep an eye out on. And after that, I uh, went and played the Titanfall 2 multiplayer. I'm not gonna go in depth into that anymore. I did it in a previous video. Link will be in the video description if you want to check it out. Titanfall 2 will be released on 28th of October this year on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, just like the previous games. After EA, I had some spare time, so I went to check out the Microsoft stand because Microsoft is coming out with some games I'm very interested in uh, that are gonna go get released this year. And I was really happy to find that they have a single player demo of Gears of War 4. Gears of War 4 looks and plays like the Gears of War game shoot, not like Gears of War Judgment. Uh, the graphics were stunning and it played really, felt really familiar of the previous games with some new additions like destructible cover, a cover that rolls down the battlefield to destroy your enemies or even if you're not watching out yourself. The executions are more brutal than ever. The melee has evolved. You can now knife people, as you, some people might already have done in the beta. And I don't know what to tell more about this. They didn't go into in depth about the story. It just we know that we're in the put, we are been put into the shoes of the son of the legendary Marcus Phoenix. Uh, something terribly went wrong, and you and your friends have to get revenge or something like that. Gears of War releasing the 11th of October of this year on Xbox and PC. After that, it was time to go uh, to one of my other appointments, uh, one of which was to Focus Interactive to interview Don't Not and Vampire Art Director Gregory C. Sucks, if I, I'm not raping his name now. Uh, also the creator of Life is Strange and Remember Me. Uh, this was perhaps the best moment in my day. Uh, Gregor's enthusiasm and how he spoke about creating this game, the story about the game, got me even more excited than I already was about this game. I'm not gonna go into that too much in depth right now. Uh, the interview is over at presentijoin.com. Link will be in the video description. Uh, links will also be in the video description for the interview I did with Fleur Marty, director for Deus Ex from Idols Interactive. Uh, Again, uh, it's very nice and lovely to speak with someone so passionate about making video games. So again, links for those two interviews are in the video description. If you're interested, uh, I highly recommend you checking it out. Um, uh, the release date for uh, Vampire is somewhere in 2017. That was everything he was allowed to tell me. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, will release 23rd of August, which is tomorrow. So go and check it out. After that, I went over to Alice VR. They gave me a pretty interesting look in beer bottle about their video game. 
And LSVR is a sci-fi video game with mind-bending puzzles. I played one of the preview levels. It offered interesting and challenging puzzles, but unfortunately didn't show anything about the story. It looked visually impressive and the, the visuals in combination with the, the puzzles will create a surreal experience and a futuristic reimagination of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, the developer told me that it's a good it's a good thing that they do, they're doing this. It will also be playable without VR, because at the moment VR devices are still quite expensive, and the hardware you need for it is expensive as well. Uh, he also told me they might do a version for it over on the Gear VR, so then it's a lot more easy to get into because most people have a smartphone anyway, and the Gear VR is not so expensive. Alice VR will be released uh, December of this year on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Linux, Mac, everything he told me might be on Gear VR. We will see when it comes out. Then it was time for a presentation over at Bethesda, where they gave us gameplay footage of Dishonored 2 and Prey 2. Starting with Dishonored 2, which takes place 15 years after the events of the first game, Emily is all grown up now and she will be playable and switchable between Corvo, who we know from the first game. We got to see a gameplay trailer which was shown some of the abilities of Emily. Example, Emily is able to clone herself and in that way kill two enemies at the same time without breaking cover. Uh, Dishonored 2 also saw the return of Delilah's Witch's Coven that we know from the Bridgemore Witch's expansion. Uh, after that, we saw some gameplay footage of Prey. It showcased some weapons and abilities. Um, they showed the glue gun, which uh, is a glue gun, but then G-L-O-O, -O, but it shoots glue. Uh, with these weapons, you can freeze enemies with glue, so they can no longer shape change and move. The glue gun can also be used to get to hard to reach places. For example, you can shoot the glue gun at the wall to create a makeshift staircase to reach the next level. Uh, also, they showed us uh, a Mimic Matter skill. Uh, it lets you take form of any object, inanimate or animate. Uh, for example, they showed us you could uh, transform into the, no, not shape, change into or or yourself into a coffee mug which rolled into a hard to reach place. Really interesting game mechanic and we will have to see what else the game will offer us when it releases. Dishonored 2 will release 11th of November 2016 and Prey will release somewhere next year. I had some time to spare so I wandered a little bit around on the entertainment area and I stumbled upon Steep. Steep immediately got my attention at this year's E3 conference. Uh, it's time for a new extreme sports game. Uh, we haven't had a snowboard game, skateboard game or whatever for a long time. And uh, it was time for someone to breathe new life into the genre. Uh, the gameplay is very smooth. The controls are a little bit confusing, but after some trial and error, uh, I was able to get on my board and, and slide down the mountain. Uh, the game offers a variety of ways to descend down the mountain. Uh, whether you want to do it on skis, snowboards, want to glide down it or skydive, it's all up to you. It has beautiful slopes and surroundings look breathtaking. It's also definitely something to keep your eye on if you're an extreme sport fan, like snowboard games, skiing games. And the game is set for a release date 2nd December of this year. After that, I just have to track back to Microsoft because they also showcased one of my favorite franchises in video gaming. Uh, this December, they will give us more Dead Rising. Dead Rising 4 is releasing and the camera-wielding reporter Frank is back. Capcom made a very wise decision to bring back their original protagonist. Even though Nick and Chuck were not bad, I missed the overconfident and arrogant reporter that we saw in the first. The playable demo looked impressive, played smooth and will be a heaven for all zombie hunters out there. Uh, apparently, what I've been told, they choose not to implement the timer this time around. Uh, which might be a good thing for people who want to sidetrack a lot and do a lot of side quests and uh, want to take their sweet time. But I, I think they uh, took out a very important game mechanic from the franchise, uh, which also created replayability. But still, I think it will be a fantastic game anyway. Killing zombies, for me personally, always nice. Uh, also, the demo introduced us to an exosuit. It's a powerful suited armor. This armor can be upgradable and allows you to carry even heavier weapons. 
Uh, of course, because we have Frank, the photo camera also returns uh, as an important gameplay mechanic. And this time around, you will be able to take selfies. Dead Rising 4 is set to release 6th of December this year. Uh, will be a nice Christmas gift for your loved ones. Last, but certainly not least, I met up with the people from CD Project Rad for a presentation and a hands-on with Gwent. The press stand was most impressive of others. Uh, most of them were just modeled like an office. This was more like a pub with a big table in between where you could play a real life version of Gwent. Uh, they opened the presentation with the, the best question you can open a presentation with. Who wants another beer? And they didn't just have regular beer, they had their own Gwent beer. Which is not only good looking, but also very tasty. Um, while we enjoyed our special Gwent beer, they told us uh, the standalone version of the well-received minigame from Witcher 3. Nee, dat was niet. While we enjoyed our special Gwent beer, they were telling us about the standalone version of the well-received minigame from The Witcher 3. The first big improvement on the original are the graphics. The battlefield has um, more animations now and you can also obtain special cards with animations as well. Also, some of the rules have changed. For example, you're now able to redraw three cards at the beginning of the round instead of two. Gwent is nothing like any other card game. It depends solely on the first cards you draw and your ability to bluff. Besides a multiplayer, uh, besides being a multiplayer game, this game will also uh, offer a single player campaign filled with the Witcher 3 lore. Uh, this game is certainly one to keep your eye on. Uh, if you want to try it out as soon as possible, go to playgwent.com. You can uh, sign up for the beta, which will start the 25th of October. And the game will release as they say, when they feel it's ready. That was my experience on GameCon at that time. It was seven in the evening, it was time for me to go home. Um, I have a picture gallery over at presentejoin.com. The link for that is in the video description. The link for the video on the title for two multiplayer, the link for the two interviews, and in general, just the link to the website, my Facebook page. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, if you like this video, please don't forget pressing the thumbs up button. Uh, I hope to see you watching my next video as well. I will see you guys later.